Zimbabwe has more than 15 million inhabitants and of that 15 million, 60% of them are estimated to be young people. Therefore, the voice of this youth demographic is not only an important one, but a very powerful one in terms of policy implementation and formulation. As part of International Youth Day, I had the privilege of sitting down with His Excellency Unati Nyoni, the child president of the Republic of Zimbabwe, to find out how he is serving his generation and his nation in his capacity as the child president. Enjoy. We've been on the grind for a while now. Five years in this game. Helping all the youth stand so proud. Speak up for impact and change. The world, the world is calling out for new leaders who can move a crowd. To bring change about without a doubt. To help us when we're down and down. My words have power. So I will not live like a coward. Born for the podium, chin up, chest out, no competition, I move like the best out. Went from local to global, using my vocal talent, the gift from above is apparent. Mine are proud parents, shine like 12 carats, African diamonds will never be average. They say silence is golden. Your Excellency, thank you very much for doing this. Thank you for having me, Tando. So, as we're celebrating International Youth Day, you're one of the people we decided to sit and chat with. Just, just tell me and explain to me as child president what some of your roles and responsibilities entail. Well, it's funny that that's the very first question I get because, believe it or not, that's what I get a lot in this society, yeah, yeah. especially from the elderly. So I was telling them that I'm here. I will tell President Loco, I know. So I'd, I'd like to answer a question on two levels. Firstly, responsibilities, or let me start with the roles, then I'll go into the responsibilities. Right. So my role generally is to be a father figure. Mm -hmm. But when I say a father figure, I don't mean being a father to the youth, because obviously I cannot be a father to someone who is my peer. Right. But I mean it in the levels of you know interacting with organizations, governments, you know, officials that the general youth cannot interact with, bringing out the views and the perspective and the vision of the youth. So generally, those are my roles, you know, being the advocate for children's rights in right. Zimbabwe. Right. I think that's the most prominent and the largest and most important, you know, advocacy for the rights because at the end of the day, we're all concerned about the welfare of children. Right. So that's my prominent role. Then going on to my responsibilities, I believe that for someone to say you have a responsibility, that means that you've been awarded a certain privilege or a certain right. right. So I acknowledge that the privilege that I have is to be invited to interact with these large organizations, your UNICEF, your Global Environmental Fund, you know, the ministry itself. Mm. So my responsibility is there, there is whenever I'm invited, whenever I'm given the opportunity to say a word or two, mm -hmm. to maximize, to make sure that whatever I say is inclusive of each and every child in Zimbabwe, right. each and every youth, and it, you know, it, 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 it contributes positively to you know, policy to welfare to each and everything that affects children exactly. in Zimbabwe. So those are my roles and responsibilities as child credit. And, and, and as you're speaking, I, I see a level of fire and passion. I'm thinking to myself, why did you run for child president? Well, funny story, actually, growing up, I had a sister who was involved within this, you know, child advocacy. She right. was a um, child junior counselor. She was a junior counselor. So she always used to tell me about the child president. You know, there's the child president, you know, he's been doing this, she's been doing this and that, you know. And I actually grew to realize how much these individuals, such as myself, that have come before me, 29 other, because I'm the 30th child president, oh, nice. you know. So the 29 other have come to, you know, to actually recognize how much they've actually contributed to my life as of today, mm. to the life that I'm living, to you know the rights that I have, and right. my awareness of the rights that I have. Mm. So I ran for child president because I acknowledge mm. that that particular mm. role is very important in our society, yeah. and I felt mm. like I had to, you know, have the categorical imperative to fill that role as an individual. And I know you haven't been here for. A long time, yes, definitely. But like, what are some of your achievements? Okay, well, to the, when you say not a long time, you are probably talking about my one month and some days in office, you know. So, 
Well, um, firstly, I've, uh, what I've tried to do is to set up my cabinet and to make sure that I can sincerely coordinate my cabinet and other junior members of parliament. Mm. But to go into detail, right, into what I've managed to achieve, um, recently I attended the Africa Green Expo in Harare, yeah. uh, organized by the Zimbabwe Sunshine Group. Mm. So there I was tasked with, you know, giving the youths perspective on climatic issues because I felt, I feel mm. like the youth have been left out in mm. the climate activism and saving the world mm. because what good is us for, for, for us to, to not propagate for rights and all that if the world itself is dying yeah. so I think me being there me sharing powerful words you know I, I was commanded there for actually bringing out that zeal and that fire yeah. of how youths want to be included in such programs right mm -hmm. I think that's something I consider as an achievement then secondly, going to something most recent, which was the Zimbabwe Gender Commission, mm -hmm. which is actually under the Constitution of Zimbabwe. Yes, yes. So I had the opportunity to say a word or two again uh, within the perspective of the demographic dividend of the youth, you know, talking about issues of child marriages and child exploitation. Mm -hmm. We actually, me in collaboration with junior councillors and junior parliamentarians, we came up with a memorandum and concept on how we actually believe these issues can be uh, eradicated within our society. So I think that that's another um, achievement. But coming on to a personal level now, because those, you know, are mostly collective uh, collaborations and, right. you know, um, on a personal level, I've been recently appointed into the National AIDS Council's Youth People's Network yeah. as a national sector representative. So I think that's a very important, for me, that's a very, very big achievement right. to work with such an organization. No. And I'm thinking now, after having achieved so much in less than what a month as you have said, what are your plans between now and the time you leave office in like 11 months time? 11 months time. Mm. Alright, well done though. Um, I think that I have to allude to the fact that we as the 30th session of the junior parliament have a theme. Mm. And our theme is eradicating harmful practices affecting children. Mm. So it's that powerful. theme itself is powerful and it actually goes on to be an umbrella term for a lot of things. Talk of your, you know, equality, equity when it comes to gender related issues, you know, climate activism, you know, um, societal norms and principles, socioeconomic uh, issues that are actually affecting the youth. So I would like to tap into issues of mental health, yes. you know, mental wellness within our society. Right. Tap into the issue of uh, youth um, um, drug abuse, substance abuse, mm -hmm. all those other issues, you know, tap into the issues of climate activism in mm -hmm. itself, mm -hmm. having more youth and, you know, and children having been active in, in, in climate propagation and yeah. coming up with solutions to actually deal with problems of climate change, just to name but a few, but you could also look at, you know, something as important as, you know, the current SIMSEC situation. As we're going into um, exam season, you know, I'm sure, I'm not sure or not if you've realized that I have an article with the Chronicle where I was backing the Simsek Fields Must Fall uh, memorandum, you know. I believe that those kind of issues that affect children should be addressed and they should be addressed now. Because what good is it for you to go to school for four years and not be able to register for your subjects mm. or register as much subjects as you want that will make you competitive within society? Mm. So I would not say that that's everything that I'm going to do because I believe that a lot more can come, you know, as we progress with time. You know, the brain works in some type of way. You know, sometimes you can just sleep and you can have a vision. You know, you've heard many stories where even the, the, the periodic table itself was formed from a vision. So I can wake up tomorrow and have a vision, you know, of something else that I can tackle. But there's just so much that we can tap into. Yeah. yeah. And, and as you're talking, I just thought to myself, do you think it's important or valuable to have young people as junior parliamentarians, as junior uh, councillors? You know, is, is that part of society important to us as a nation? Because you know, we, yeah. we may not see it as important, but do you think it is? And if so, why? Definitely, definitely important. I think it's, it's if you look at it on a structural level, it's actually the way, uh, uh, the, one of the few ways that the ministries and governments have, have or, or, or have had rather, to interact with the youth. Mm -hmm. Because these junior parliamentarians, these junior councillors, these junior senators, right, are foot soldiers 
for the ministry itself. Okay. So imagine a situation where these people didn't exist, where I didn't exist. Mm -hmm. Who would be uh, the voice for the youth? Who'd be telling the government what we want and what we, how we want it? Mm -hmm. Who'd be bringing up the solutions that we've had, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're aware or not, but we have, we've had amendments to the Children's Act, to the National Disability Act. And those amendments have actually come from, have been influenced by these junior parliamentarians and junior senators. Wow. So imagine a society, a Zimbabwean society, without these individuals there, you know, to actually raise the flag, to raise the flag on the issues that exist. Who tell the media the issues that the youth are going through? Yeah. Who tell the government what we want and how we want it and when we want it? Yeah. So it's very important. I think people should acknowledge the significance, even though it may not be in broad daylight or in, in, in within uh, the reach of the naked eye, you know? But they, people have to appreciate the fact that there's something that is being done by those foot soldiers, mm. you know, that have been elected by the, their, their school students, their peers, who uh, their peers believe in, you know, to actually lead them within society. So, yeah. do, do you know, I, I'm tempted to say or ask you, you know, let me just do it. What do you wish you knew about being child president before you took up the role? <laughs> wow, I think that's a very, very tough question. <laughs> but the answer is quite near, actually. Um, um, Considering the fact that I'm a science student, mm. you know, people always tell me, ah, how are you a science student and a public speaker and a public representative, mm. you know, and all that. But I wish I knew the pressure that it actually brings onto your academic life mm. and, and also in social life. Because right now, as much as I'm a child, you know, I have to be conscious of certain things, you know. Mm. I cannot, you know, be up and about and do all those other funny, funny stuff. Mm. I'm not saying that I want to do those things. Right? <laughs> I'm just saying, say, I'm yeah. just saying yeah. that, you know, I've got this responsibility, this added responsibility to be a father figure, as I mentioned in the beginning of our, of our interview, you know. So I feel like I, I wish I knew the pressure, you know, because I've had opportunity to travel a lot, you know going to places Harare for a week, uh, somewhere else, you know, and that has taken me out of the classroom, mm -hmm. you know, imagine, you know, working with a beast such as physics and chemistry, and you miss a whole mm -hmm. week's work, yeah, and yeah. then you come back now and you have to catch up, so I wish I knew it was going to be like this, mm -hmm. but I'm not saying that I regret being child president, yeah. because I feel like I myself have the responsibility to upon myself to actually do this for the children today and the children tomorrow, yeah. you know, and the future generation itself. And what has the role taught you about leadership since you, you, you took it up? Well, I think you've noticed that I've mentioned a lot of collaboration, you know, mentioned organizations, I've mentioned government sectors and officials, you know. So I believe that the, this role itself has showed me how leadership is not only about taking the responsibility upon yourself, mm -hmm. but it's about collaborative efforts because that's when you can make the most impact. If you collaborate with people, you make the most impact. For example, we have this junior assemblies, we have the junior parliament, the junior senate, the junior council. These are all individual junior assemblies. Yeah. But in an instance where we collaborate as junior assemblies and work together, we have much more impactful events. We have much better funded, you know, and structured events, you know. Mm -hmm. So this role itself has taught me how, you know, it's all about unity and working together. It's not about who has the most power, or who has the highest, you know, um, occupational position in the office. It's about what you bring onto the table and how exactly you can help each other and network to actually have these impactful yeah. things. I feel like, there are a lot of people who have spoken into your life, a lot of people who modeled you, who raised you, and that allowed you to be this, you know, flourishing young professional, if I can put it this way. Yeah. So let me pry a bit into that because I want I want to I want to find what fuels you. Because I'm thinking to myself, which leader, dead or alive, uh, inspires you <laughs> and why? Wow, okay, I think the response to this question is very tough. Okay. You know why? Yeah. Because um, in a situation where, you know, there are a lot of people around you yeah. and people who, you know, pride themselves of molding you as yeah. an individual, right? Yeah. And then you go on to mention one <laughs> individual. You know, it's, it's very tough. It's very right. tough in that aspect. Yes. Yeah. But I look up to um, our father, father of the nation, Joshua Mkakuwa mm. I think that's my role model. Mm. And 
the reason why is because of his fatherly figureness, his um, warmth when he um, interacts with people. I believe that I'm a people's person and he's one of the individuals that helped mold me into a people's person just by looking at the things that he did yeah. for society, how he propagated and advocated for equality and you know, um, put away all the tribal slaves, all the discrimination. And he was just a, a people's person, you know. Mm -hmm. He was all about uniting the nation. And that's the kind of leader that I want to be. Mm -hmm. I believe that we lack such leaders. We need much more of those type of leaders within our society. And I would like to be one of those leaders that actually follow his footsteps. Yeah, I know you've got quite a lot you need to do, but allow me this one last question, Your Excellency. That if you could get 30 seconds, and in that 30 seconds, you have the attention of every single young person in this country. Speak to them for 30 seconds. 30 seconds, you said. 30 seconds. Right. Um, dear youth of Zimbabwe, demographic dividend the most important. I think that at this very moment, we should divorce from the narrative that we are the leaders of tomorrow and take it upon ourselves to actually see and acknowledge that we are the leaders of today, not tomorrow. Because this narrative itself, I believe, has caused us to, you know, turn a blind eye on certain issues that happen in society. A person will be like, I'm the youth, I'm the leader of tomorrow, so I'm not going to do anything today. I'm just going to fold my hands and I'm going to wait for my elders to do things for me. But we have to recognize that the impact that we have as the youth in this society is very large. And we actually need to be proactive in whatever we do in, act in activities, climate activism, you know, equality activism and all that. The only way the government can know how to help us is if we step up and stand out and actually bring that out. We say it out loud. And that cannot happen when we fold our hands and say, I'll just leave tomorrow. Let's leave today. <laughs> your Excellency, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Dando.